What's going on guys? This is Josh here as always the Vault Hunters Union here in Kerbal Space Program. It's been a while since I've done a KSP video. It's been a while since I played the game to be honest, but version 1.0 came out. You can see in the bottom right it is finally out. Four years in the making. I'm going to show you some of the new stuff in this game. This game got pretty much a big overhaul and this is one of the biggest additions here. Finally you have female characters in the game. Female Kerbal Knots. And uh, so female characters are pretty much just as good if not better overall than a lot of the males so they're equal so we're gonna go ahead and uh, take a look here at some of the new stuff so we're gonna go ahead and start just a just a sandbox for right now just so I can give you guys an idea of what's going on so a lot has changed in this so we're gonna try to cover as much as we can okay Wow, first things first. Okay, there's the frame rate. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and look at some of the new parts here. We'll look in the hangar first and take a look at some of the new stuff. So, a lot of things got a pretty significant overhaul. Like, even just the general MK cockpits look way better, in my opinion. But there are some new total... Re like, the MK1 inline cockpit, you might have seen this on Scott Manley's video, looks way different. It looks insane. So, there's a whole ton of new parts here. Uh, we'll go ahead and go down the list just so we have an idea of some of the new stuff. So the surface scanning module, which is a science tool that allows you to, uh, a small module that includes soil, atmospheric, and organic sampling tools. Um, what else do we got here? We got a narrow band scanner, ideal for surveying potential landing sites. The scanner provides detailed information about the planet or moon that it orbits. A survey scanner, this uses a combination of advanced sensor technology and witchcraft to provide information on a planet or moon's natural resources. Um, what else do we got here? That's pretty much it here, but, oh, here's one. The Atmospheric Fluid Spectral vari Variometer. Variometer. It's a device for performing accurate fluid spectral variometry scans of the surrounding atmosphere. So, that's all lo a lot of new stuff here. So, a lot of really awesome things and a lot of new ways to get science. And, uh, you know, nowadays in science, you're hearing about all these different instruments that landers and stuff have. So, it's a good thing to have. There's a lot of other things here. There's flu, uh, new fuel cells that allow fuel and oxidizers to be converted into energy, which is awesome. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff here. There's an ISRU, ISRU converter. This mobile processing plant can take raw materials containing even trace amounts of oxygen and hydrogen and crack them into useful products. Now, there are a whole bunch of other things here. There's also different kinds of landing gear. We're going to go ahead and quickly pop some of this on just so we can... Uh, oh, I butchered that. All right, let's do that again. There we go. So there's uh, some new landing gear here. That'd be more for like uh, just a small plane. And then there's the same on this side. This one would actually go underneath. Uh, I'm not putting this on for anything. There's also a large landing gear. I don't know why you'd want to have something that huge, but uh, um, the choice is yours, I guess. There's a medium landing gear, which is the same, just a little bit smaller. So there's a whole bunch of new stuff here. We're going to go slide over to the next page and see what we got. I'm sure there's going to be new stuff that I'm missing. This is, oh, this is the cool thing I saw in Scott's video. And this is a service bay. Atmospheres play a lot more of a role in the um, in the new version than they did before. So a lot of the things, like, you know, you'd have your lander with your little, um, not your lander, you'd have your little satellite there with a bunch of science experiments on the outside, try to land on a planet, nothing would happen. Now stuff's going to happen, shit's going to blow apart. So you need to have somewhere to protect it. And that's exactly what the service bay does, is you can now take science and stash it in there, and then go ahead and close the science bay so that uh, it's protected. Now, there is other things as well. We're going to go ahead and quickly take a look. There are new... Um, let's see here okay so these are um, for fairings you can have fairings now so you can protect your any objects you may have in there any satellites and it's completely customizable so you can make it look like anything you want to um, which is freaking awesome and then once you're in orbit you can go ahead and detach that that looks really cool um, what else do we got here we got um, so nose cones are going to be very important now on ships. They weren't before, but now they are going to be. The cool thing for space planes now is that they have air brakes. And air brakes go on the side, and the air brakes will stick out when you need to slow down and help you slow down. Um, there are some other stuff, too. There's an awesome new ram air intake, which I think looks freaking absolutely awesome. There's a whole bunch of new stuff, but this is one of the most important things that has been added in parts-wise to KSP, and that is a heat shield. Previously, you could just kind of go and land on a planet... And, um, you know, go in through the atmosphere like on Duna or Eve and uh, nothing happened. Well, now, like I said, shit's going to happen. So you need to have 
some protection. You need to be protected from the elements and that heat shield is going to be essential. And I believe as well the heat shield can wear away. It can wear away. So if you come into a planet too quick, it may burn away. Obviously not go, going to a planet without that is not a good thing. Um, there's engine pre-coolers. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other new stuff. Let's take a look at some of the structural tabs to see if I can find anything out of out of in my eye. No, nothing there. Command, pretty much all the same. Oh, there is a avionics hub. Impress your peers by showing off your elite flying skills, but lack the skills to become a trained pilot. Okay, so this is a bit of a um, aut autonomous flying for you. Uh, I don't know how quite how well that works, but I haven't really played around a lot with this yet. Um, some new engines. I believe there is a couple. Maybe not. There is. There's a flea sol solid fuel booster, which is 180 thrust and 192 in a vacuum. So you'll see two on the stat show thrust in the atmosphere and also in a vacuum. Um, so, you know, that's that's something to keep in mind, too. It's something that now plays a part. Fuel tanks as well. Um, fuel tanks, I think. I don't recall seeing anything new added. Um, there's well yeah there's a new looks like a new xenon container or an improved xenon container that it's I think it's the same one there's a small holding tank for raw materials or possibly spare snacks oh so you can put ore in there yeah because you are able to mine ore now so that's the whole thing in this game and pods pretty much are all the same so now I'm going to show you some uh, some flying in KSP now the thing with KSP is that you, the one the heat that it always got we're going to load up um, we'll do the Raven Spear Raven Spear MK one that was one of my favorite planes to fly the thing about uh, KSP is that the atmosphere was never really realistic it was heavy and it was slow so you can never really reach realistic speeds and a lot of people complain about that so now you're gonna see here you're gonna see how fast this thing takes off watch how fast this plane builds up speed and the other thing you're gonna see um, hang on, I'll show you here So it doesn't take very long to build up speed anymore, and so you see, like the thing is, you can—it was almost impossible to get to three, four hundred meters per second at sea level, which is obviously very realistic in real life. You can see that you're now getting there before basically the end of the runway. Um, the cool thing is, is that you're—you can see that uh, the air forming around the aerodynamics. There's also new intakes, and you can see the air actually going in the intake and out the back. It looks awesome. So we're going to go ahead and fly here. You can see we're already reaching 500 meters per second, over half a kilometer. And uh, you can see that the plane is shaking a bit as it's probably realistic. Well, you're going to see what happens once we get to about 800 meters per second. The aerodynamics are going to kick in for good. And uh, watch the explosion effects. You can see it's getting hot and... Okay, so you can see the camera actually shakes a bit to give you a bit of an explosive effect. You can see that the camera rattles and stuff like that, and now we're left to die. Alright guys, we are on the launch pad here with just a simple basic rocket. I just want to give you an idea of something really cool, another cool effect they added to this game, and that is finally Jet Blast out the sides. Just like in real space, uh, in real space missions here with NASA and SpaceX, these vents at the side have a purpose to you know kind of redirect the exhaust flow from the uh, shuttles but they were never functioning in KSP but now watch when this takes off you can see the smoke exhaust at the side it's really cool really awesome effect and, and I think it really makes a big difference to the quality of the game and the really the looks of the game itself so we're gonna go ahead and climb up into uh, space and we're gonna take a look at this heat shield all right, guys, we are starting to get close to the atmosphere. I had to kind of redo that. But you can see now that I have the heat shield on here, and that is protecting me. The ablator, I don't know, I'm probably pronouncing that completely wrong. But that is basically what is protecting us. I don't even know if I could flip this around. Or yeah, I can, but I don't want to. I want that heat shield to be protecting me. So not having a heat shield would mean certain disaster for this crew. So this makes the game a lot more realistic in the sense that you can't just kind of like do a, a suicide burn and go right into, um, you know, into a planet and not have any issues. It makes it a lot more realistic, but a lot of the things, especially like the atmosphere effects, where the atmosphere gets, uh, uh, the atmosphere seems to let you go faster and you're a lot more efficient, I find, as well from the little I've played. And that is good because that basically allows you to, you know, it's good for newer players to the series. It, the game's overall more realistic, but I think it also appeals more to, 
uh, to newer players. Newer players can jump in, whereas before it was kind of difficult to learn how to get into orbit. But, uh, you know, that's just my opinion. This is a lot of the new stuff in the game. There is a lot more. Career mode has been greatly enhanced as well. But uh, if you guys have any questions or comments or concerns, please feel free to let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Peace.